All right, Dave here. I'd like to talk about uh, the difference between a normal map and a displacement map. I think there's a lot of confusion kind of around this subject, and I really want to kind of demystify it and explain what's going on here. So I'll also talk about how to create the maps. So if we look here, I'm going to go ahead and bring my um, character. So I've got my dinosaur from ZBrush here, and I'm going to show how to make a displacement map and a normal map from this and why that's important and how to apply it in Maya. Now, before I do that, I just kind of want to show the end result. Okay, I think it'll make more sense on why we're doing it if we can kind of see the point of why we're doing it. So if we look here at this first one, um, this is the actual just the geometry of the dinosaur. Okay, um, it doesn't look as exciting as it does in ZBrush. And if I, if I look at the Maya scene, I'm just going to bring the Maya scene over here. I can see that the um, T-Rex is not as high poly as ZBrush. And that's because we want to make it optimized. We want to make it efficient in Maya. So if I just render it out without any special treatment, it's going to look like this. Then if I apply a normal map to it, I can start to see all the detail that's just like in ZBrush, okay? And I'm just going to kind of pull this off to my other monitor. And you can see that we're, getting, we're seeing all the scales, all the wrinkles. And if I go to my lighting here, I've got some special lights set up on this. If I start to move my lighting around, I can see how the normal map will respond to that lighting. So it's not... It's not a texture that we're seeing there. It's actually an illusion of depth, okay? You can see how the shadows kind of adjust. So it's, I feel like it's a really convincing um, illusion. But where we're going to lose some of that illusion, if we look here on the spikes of the dinosaur, if I start to rotate the camera, I can see that that illusion is gone. So in other words, this is a good illusion of depth of all this detail, but when I look at the side, that illusion is gone on the normal map because the normal map is only so good. The normal map works best when you're looking directly on the subject here. And that brings me into the displacement map. Okay, the displacement map is a great illusion of depth and you can see that when I move the light, once again it responds. It looks exactly like Maya. Um, and I can see, once again, how all the shadows respond. But what, or I'm sorry, it looks exactly like ZBrush. But I feel like what this has over the normal map is that when I rotate it, take a look at these spikes. See how these spikes stick out? In other words, it changes the silhouette. In other words, it's displaced. So the normal map is just the normal geometry, and the displacement map actually kind of pushes the geometry around. Okay, And I think I should mention that if we look at this if we look at them in Maya, uh, they are identical, okay, as far as the geometry is concerned. So the geometry is absolutely identical on all of them. Um, it's just that, once again, this one has a normal map applied. This one has a displacement map applied. So let me show you first how to create those maps, and then I'll show how to apply them in Maya. So it's actually super simple. So I'm going to go back to ZBrush here, and when I'm in ZBrush, I'm just going to double click on this divider here, and I'm going to go up to Z Plugin. I'm going to pull this over, and I'm going to open up that multi map exporter. Okay, and you can see that a couple choices here. I have our displacement and normal. So if I click on normal, um, I'm going to choose my size. So I'm going to choose large one, and if you want to go bigger than that. You can actually type up to 8096, okay? So kind of a cool trick to make a super, super large map. Um, and then if I want additional settings for the normal map, I can come down here and go to normal map. And now let's talk about what's going on here. I can see that my T-Rex right now is, if I hover over him, he's about 3 million polygons. And if I bring him down to level 1, he is at 3,000 polygons, roughly. Um, and what I'm talking about are all these, um, obviously, you know, all these squares here. So our goal is to have this geometry in Maya, what we looked at, but we want it to make it look 
like it's all this detail. So, and once again, the two ways to do that are with normal maps or displacement maps. So if I wanted to make a normal map, what I would do is I would put this guy at level one, and then in my normal map, I'm gonna say, I want this to look like it's level six, and then um, I'm just gonna actually leave this alone, and then I would hit export, um, or I would hit create all maps. Then on the displacement map, if I want a displacement map as well, I'm gonna click on displacement, and then here I'm gonna say subdivision level, yeah, I want it to look like level six, and once again, I'm gonna leave all this alone, and I'm just gonna to go to create all maps. Now, if you have something complex like UDIMs or something like that, if you go to the um, create all maps, you would have to um, actually hold on file names. Yeah, here we go. So if you have something complex, um, you'd have to go here to, and switch that to UDIM and then it would name it correctly. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. That's just kind of an advanced topic. Don't even worry about that. Um, but you could set it to displacement and normal and then hit create all maps. Now you're going to have the maps. This is what they're physically going to look like. They're going to look kind of weird. So if I look at this, this is just kind of a, a zoomed up region of, of just the head of the character. And that's what the normal map looks like. Okay, it's this kind of this weird blue, red, and green map. And the displacement map actually looks even weirder. If I click on this, it looks like something straight out of a horror movie. And what it is, it's basically one channel, okay? And it doesn't matter, it picked the red channel in this case. And the reason that it's one channel is because here in my displacement settings, um, I did not have three channels selected. So if I had three channels selected, it would look like a grayscale image. But because it, I didn't, it's just gonna look like one. So sometimes people think, oh my gosh, something's wrong with it. Well, not, nothing's wrong with it. Okay, that's just how it looks. Um, and these are just complex ways that the computer is understanding this three-dimensional depth. And I say, who cares why? Let's just go with it. Now I'm going to show you how to apply it in Maya. So now if I go into Maya, um, I have basically this character here that just has a simple AI standard surface. This one here, I, um, okay, this one just has an AI standard surface that I applied the normal map to, and I can see that under here, geometry, I applied it to mount mapping. And I'm gonna do this for you in a second. And then this one here, you may think, oh, I'm gonna just uh, make an AI standard surface and then apply displacement somewhere. Well, if you look all through this stuff, there is no place to put the displacement. And that gets a little confusing so I'm just going to break it down one at a time. I'm going to start with the normal map, and then I'll do the displacement map. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, assign a new material, and on the pop-up, I'm going to choose AI standard surface. Okay, I'm going to do that no matter what I have, a normal map or a displacement map, everything's going to be AI standard surface. Once I click on that, um, I'm going to scroll down to a geometry. Open that up, and then I'm gonna to go to bump mapping right here. And then if I click on this, now I can put the file on. So I wanna grab a file, and I'm gonna switch this to tangent space normals. That's how it knows it's not a bump map, it's a normal map. So if I click on that, I'm gonna to go to bump value, and then I'm gonna click on the folder, and then I'm gonna go find the folder. So, or find the file. So if I go here, uh, here's the normal map. And this guy does have several uh, UDIMs, so he's a little bit more complex. And I can see that there's a special naming convention there. I'm just gonna go ahead and click open. So if you do have UDIMs on yours, and you can start to see that, I can see it. Um, I just have to go here and tell it to be UDIM. And now it's gonna find all of them. I'll hit generate preview, I don't know if it'll work. Um, and then here, I'm gonna set this to raw, okay? And um, once again, I, I don't really trust uh, the viewport, although I can see the, actually the viewport does a really good job here. I can actually see it. Um, okay, cool. Now I've got my normal map applied, so I'm gonna have that very convincing detail 
like we looked at here, um, and if the light moves, it's going to respond correctly. The problem is, is that it's not going to disrupt the silhouette. Now you might be saying, well, why then, if this is more convincing, why would we ever want a normal map? And the reason is because video games like normal maps because they're easier to calculate. So um, you might be in a situation where you're not allowed to use displacement maps if you're doing real-time things like virtual reality or video games or something along those lines. Um, you may only be able to use a normal map. Now it's pretty good, um, but it's not super good if you have close-up shots, if you're doing something like for feature film, you may want a displacement map. And if it's rendered, you know, if it's not, if it's pre-rendered, meaning it can take as long as it wants for the render, then most likely you'll be using displacement maps. So now we'll show you how to add a displacement map. So I'm going to go to this one, and it's a little bit more confusing to add a displacement map, but not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign a new material, Arnold Shader, AI Standard Surface. Okay, once again, I'm back to just a clean slate here. Um, and you might think, well, hmm, I'm going to search here for displacement map. But I'm going to go ahead and go into my hypershade and take a look at something here. So I'm on what's called AI Standard Surface 6. If I hover over this, this is AI Standard Surface 6. And if I click on this, and I can click on this arrow here, this input and output connections. And what it's showing me is here's the material. Um, and it normally, what, what happened is we'd plug everything in, uh, like all the files would be plugged into the material. But you can see that there's this kind of this special node over here that actually has displacement. I could find that, if I knew that, I could click on this shader group tab. And this is actually what this is. So if I click on this, now it brings me to displacement. I can see that it's also right here. Um, now it doesn't matter which one I click on. Okay, they're one and the same. But if I click here for displacement, now I can go find my displacement file. And I'll just make this bigger. And I'll go here to find it. And if I come down here, uh, actually I've got displacement saved right here. Okay, there it is. And once again, that's the funny looking one, but that's all right. I'm going to click here. And I want to make sure that that's set to um, raw. Okay, great. And I can see that now here's my material. And then kind of in this special area here, this is my displacement. The way that I think of this is you can see that this one is the um, one with the normal map. And this one's with the displacement map. And I can see that it's not updating in the viewport. I think of it like this. Anything that you're plugging in, so if I compare this material, I'll, I'll just grab both of these and hit like that. Okay. I can see that they both have, um, hold on here, let me just go like this. Okay, good. So this is the one of the normal map. I can see here's the material. Here's the shader group. All materials have shader groups. But I can see that the normal map is plugged into the normal uh, map of this material. Where I can see that the displacement, the displacement is plugged into this shader group, which is kind of lives after the material, which is weird. So I think of it like this. I think of anything that's on this side plugged directly into the material, I'll be able to see in the viewport. Anything that comes after the material, like this shader group, I won't be able to see in the viewport. I'll only be able to see at render time because it needs special instructions. Okay, so that's why it's kind of weird where you could think about anything plugging into here is going to kind of be real time for video games. Anything here has to be, you're only going to see it at render time, so it's generally slower and a little bit more expensive to, to do that. So now what I'm going to do, um, even though I have that plugged into the shader group, it's still not ready to go. Okay, it's still not ready to rock and roll because I need to do some other things. I need to physically select this geometry and go into the shape tab. Okay, so I'm once again in the attribute editor and this one's, it says shape here. I'm going to go down here to Arnold. And if I scroll down, I can see something subdivisions. By default, that would be set to none. I'm going to set it to Cat Clark. 
And then I'm gonna put my iterations to six because remember in ZBrush there were six subdivision levels. So I'm gonna put that to six. What that's saying is that at render time, so if I hit the render button, it's going to subdivide this mesh six times and then calculate the displacement map. Um, if I go to the displacement attributes, here's where I could kind of um, bump up the height. I could like increase the intensity of it, if you will. Um, I'll, I'll generally just leave this alone. And, um, but this is one extra step that you have to remember to do when you are applying displacement maps. So I think displacement maps, especially in Maya, are a little confusing because once again, you have to know how to get to that shader group to plug them in. And like I showed you here, once you click on the material, you can click on this input output connection, look for this, and that's where you plug your displacement map in. On the normal map, it's simple because you can just go down here to geometry and you can plug in your normal map right there. Um, the only thing you have to remember is that you have to switch this to tangent space normals. Okay. Um, so hopefully that was helpful and kind of helps to demystify, you know, the normal map versus displacement map.